Hey everybody, welcome back to Wine Up TV. I'm your host Wayne, and on today's show, I have uh, well, Colleen and Camille and Marnie. Marnie, and we're going to talk about Camus, a winery that's very dear to me because they just make bomb wines. I love them. So when we come back, we're going to talk about these wines, and you guys are going to go out and buy these wines. They're that good. See you in a second. Tune out. Um, Camus, their 40th vintage will be this 2012. 2012. Chuck Wagner, congratulations. John Bolta, I just got off the phone with you, um, and I love uh, how you're still making your conundrum all these years later, and you still have such a consistent product every single year, and that says a lot about you and the fruit that you get and, and how good a wines you make. Um, the new label, a couple years ago, uh, I'm more old school. I like this label, but I like the old label too. So uh, the other wine we're going to talk about is the Cabernet Sauvignon. And you know, besides these two wines, they do have their their um, Camus Special Selection, um, which I don't have open today. But it's just it's so consistent. And the neat thing with Chuck is he's never raised his price. I don't think ever on that Special Selection. It's always been about about one hundred and thirty five, hundred and forty dollars retail. And the neat thing is is as you watch all the other Napa Valley cult wineries, Colgan and, and, and such, um, they've always, every year, doom, boom, 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 now it's like five, six, seven hundred dollars a bottle, Screaming Eagles in that category, and, and uh, kudos to Chuck for always staying true to his pricing and, and never really gouging the market um, on his special selection. All right, so the first one I'm going to talk about is uh, the conundrum, and this is a conundrum. What does that mean? It means a puzzle, and, and the neat thing about this conundrum, it is a puzzle of grapes, and Colleen, do you know what's in this? Wine? You know what? I love to tell you that I don't because the winery will not tell you what the makeup is. And I love that. I, it's, a, it's a mixture. It's usually about 11 different varietals every year. It, it's a hodgepodge. Close, it's a hodgepodge, but I it like really, that you, really they don't tell you exactly what it is. So guess what? As a wine drinker, we have to analyze this wine and taste it and say, what varietals are we getting from there? And I always find something different every time I taste it. I However, there's always that underlying muscat. Oh, absolutely. You can always smell you can what never, muscat because it's, no, it's, no, it's yeah. spicy, it, it's, it's sweet. Undeniable there's muscat. And that ap apricot. But a mm -hmm. lot of apricot in there. I think the muscat, if I'm wrong, if I'm not wrong, is about 3%. And they won't tell you that. But I, so it's very little, but because it's so, the, vis the nose is so strong that you, you really can tell that varietals in there. It is, and what I like about this, this would pair so, so well with spicy food. Oh, it's got a little bit of RS, probably, it tastes sweeter than it probably is. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say it's maybe one and a half percent residual I'm sugar. Right around there. So, you know, it, it's got that, but it's got the beautiful aromatics, and that's what you get with the Muscat, and I'm sure there's some Sauv Blanc in there, and there's some, probably some... Rousson, maybe. Yeah, I mean, there's just some... There's 11, I think. 11, 11 yeah. grapes that go in this box. Name one and be right. But do you not just smell Bosch pear? I mean, just to me, it's just like, that just screams pear. But there's a touch, like a little touch of spice to mm -hmm. it, too, that I think would go great with, you know, Indian food. It's oh, like absolutely. Like a curry. You want Indian that little something. bit of residual to yeah. cut through that, that spiciness. So, uh, a little bit more history about Camus is uh, my, my kid's mom worked at uh, Camus back in the mid-90s. And I remember when I was a tour guide at Mondavi, I'd run over there between tours and I'd drink the special, drink the, and just like chumming it up with all those people that were in the tasting room when it was open before it was, before it was by appointment only. And, um, and it was just a lot of fun just to be able to go over there and, and see and, and get to know Chuck and Charlie, when, you know, uh, Charlie, Chuck's dad before he passed away. And he showed me how to make olives on his property. property and, and it was just really a good, good feel. And I remember when his kids were really young and, and uh, now that now they've kind of fallen into their, their dad's footsteps and are the winemakers um, for I know the Pinot and I don't know who who's Shard. yeah and the Marcelle Shard uh, who basically has the reins so Chuck still does the the, the 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 cab right here and the interesting thing is is most of these vineyards that these come from are about 15 years old 
So they've replanted a lot of Napa Valley. You had a lot of uh, um, viruses, a lot of leaf roll, a lot of phylloxera, a huge phylloxera problem back in the late 80s, early 90s, mid 90s. I remember when a lot of vineyards were dying out. They were replanting it, but boy, the cost of replanting uh, was definitely substantial. All right, let's talk about what I think is one of the best cabs I've ever had. And I will give, I'll give, a, I'll give you the props right there, Chuck. Um, this wine, there's nothing about Camus I've never liked. Um, sometimes I can't afford them um, like I used to like to, but um, you know, it's still good. So, you know, retail, this is about 65, 70 bucks. Um, you could probably, you know, you go on Wine Searcher and, you know, everybody's kind of com very competitive with prices now. But it, it's a really, really well-structured Cabernet Sauvignon. Best so consistent. You could, you could do for California Cabernet. You know, I, kudos on him. Every single year, the consistency this wine has, it's got that, it's probably got a little bit of Merlot blended in because it has a little bit of green pepper, uh, bell peppers on the nose. I like that. I like my vegetables in a bottle. And that's just, you know. I like my food in a bottle. <laughs> yeah, no, bottled. I, this is great. Just saying. Hmm. You know, you can start getting all this crushed, just crushed, that spice, this spice, that. This is just good wine. <laughs> you know, this is the wine where you, you take it, you, you swish it around your mouth, you swallow it, and you just kind of sit back and you go, wow, good shit. This is just phenomenal wine. I can. It's the internet. Oh, I can us too. You can. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. But we, we, you know, this. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. But you know, it's just you know, you get a wine of this caliber, and the 2009 vintage is just very rich, round, ripe, and plump. And when you when you make wine, and I'll tell you, he just doesn't make ten barrels of this. I mean, this is you know, he makes a, a, a substantial amount. But it's consistency that I like with this wine. It's going to be, I mean, the Camus oh, name, the Camus product. You go, yeah, elegant. you go to the shelf. People come in the shop. Hey, where's your Camus? Where's your conundrum? Where's your special luck? It's here. You know, it's great. Anyway, guys, um, thanks for tuning in. Run down and get some of this. You know, whether yeah. you buy it here on Wine Up TV or at your local shop, get it. It's wonderful wine. So, everybody, cheers, cheers, cheers. 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 Chuck, Happy here's Valentine's. to you. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye-bye.